In this tutorial, I'll show you how to use the Voyager function in Google Earth, what it is, and the neat features associated with it. Google Earth is a great educational tool, especially the Voyager fun function for exploring cultures, world events, and histories, and putting that into a geospatial context. So let's see how we use the Voyager function. First, go to google.com earth, and then press launch Earth in Chrome. And now once Google Earth is opened, how you get to the Voyager function is going to this bar on the side and pressing this wheel. And as you can see, it's organized by subject. So let's look at an example of how we use Voyager. We'll go to Hidden Japan. From snow-capped mountain and glistening cave formations to constellation of islands, Japan is home to natural splendor outside the, its incredible cities. Let's explore the natural beauty of Japan and the off-beaten path through Google Street View. So this is just one example of how we can use Google Voyager. So now we're going down and it's showing us an abandoned island nine miles from Nagasaki. So Hashima Island, commonly known as Battleship Island, is an abandoned island lying about 15 kilometers, nine miles from the city of Nagasaki, Japan. So let's explore this island and take a look. And when we first go here, it shows us the top view in 3D formation. Now we can actually go and view this from the street. So all the blue lines are where we can take a look. So let's take a look up here. And now when we're down here, we can take a 3D view of the buildings around the area. And we can even walk around by pressing these arrows. So let's press that and it's going to take us further that way. Now we keep exploring, walk through this building and take a look around. Now when we want to exit this view, press on the person again and scroll out. If you want to enter again, of course, just drag and then drop where you want to go. So let's take a view of the island from the water. And this is what the island looks like from the water at that location. Now we're going to move on and go to the next location. Now it's showing us Agasawara Island, also known as Bonin Island. Agasawara Island are an archipelago of islands 966 kilometers from south of Tokyo. It's compared to the Galapagos Islands because of the abundance of unique plants and lives associated with it. So now we look at the island from the top view. And we'll see if there's any view on the island that we can look at. And there is. So we scroll down and take a look from any of these points. And we can look around and see. So as you have seen from these first two examples, you can really explore and examine locations by learning a little fact about them and then actually walking through using the 3D walkthrough tool. So now let's go back to Voyager and see another example of what we can do. We'll go up and go to culture. Scroll down and here's some a quiz. So let's take a look at what happens when you take a quiz. When you take a quiz in Google Voyager, it'll give you a question and then a location. So which British queen made Christmas trees popular in England? And I'll take a guess and say Victoria. So I got that question right and now it's going to zoom in and actually show me the Buckingham Palace where a green Victoria and her family were sketched around a Christmas tree in this photo. So this is actually a 3D view of the Buckingham Palace and once again we can explore it if we really want to and look at it from street view what the Buckingham Palace looks like. So now let's go to the next question. Where do people celebrate Dongzi Festival of the Winter Solstice? Russia, China, or Japan? And I'm going to guess China. And I got it right again. So now it will take me down and show me a 3D view of a temple where this is actually celebrated. So let's move along. Which city is home to the world's largest Hanukkah memorial? Tel Aviv, Montreal, or New York? So let's go. It shows you here's A, here's B, and here's C. So let's 
go with Montreal. And I was wrong. It's New York. Which makes sense because there's so many people there. So we can keep going through it and it's going to show us which ones we get right, which ones we get wrong. For this one we'll guess Sweden, which is correct. And now it takes us and shows us that. And we can keep doing this. And now we'll go back because we've seen how to do this to Voyager. So, so far we've seen some really cool things, exploring the world, taking quizzes, and actually getting a geospatial context of where these things are happening. So let's try one more. Let's do education. In Google Earth Explorer, we can learn even beyond the world. For instance, here's a planetary exploration on Earth to get a perspective of things compared to Earth and other planets. So let's start exploring. And you can watch a video about how, what this will teach us and then explore. So let's keep going and have some examples. So one of the topographies many celestial bodies have in common is a crater, which is the trace of where an object that collided with the planet. On Earth, craters gradually disappear with weathering and erosion. However, on celestial bodies without air and water, they remain as they were long ago, especially Caloris Basin on Mercury. It is one of the largest craters in our solar system with a diameter of 1,500 kilometers. Even on Earth, craters in dry deserts area leave experience of crash relatively clean. This is an example of a crater, the Beringer Crater, in Arizona of the United States, which is about 1.2 kilometers wide and 180 meters deep. So if you imagine this compared to 1,500 meters, that gives you a really good context of how big craters can get on other planets. So we'll take a look around, zoom out to get an even better context, and see how small this really is compared to the context of the rest of the world. And now if you imagine 1,500 kilometers, it's about a thousand times bigger than 1.2, a little more than um, a thousand. So that is some context of how big it can be. Now we'll keep exploring through this. A mountain that exceeds 10,000 meters on Mars, Mars Olympus Mons. And now we're comparing this to Mauna Kea, which is the highest mountain on Earth from the seafloor to the top of the mountain. So, even larger than Everest, if you did not know that. Olympus Mons on Mars is actually 27,000 meters tall, compared to Mauna Kea, which is over 10,000 meters. So, even though Mauna Kea is the highest mountain on Earth, Olympus Mons on Mars is twice, over twice as tall as Mauna Kea. So that just gives you some context. So now that we've seen many of the functions that you can do, let's look at one more actually. Let's look at the Age of Encounters and follow some explorers as they go through their trips. So let's look at Christopher Columbus. You can watch a video on him and now it's going to show many of his routes if we scroll through. So let's look. and gives us context on the history of these routes. So those are all just some interesting features associated with Google Voyager that you can look at and um, have students work through. So it's a really good tool for examining things in a global context and overall learning.